this is Melanie with the Pardesi Podcast, and I'm joined by Suchan Marota from Film Companion in Mumbai, India. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Uh, welcome, Suchan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's really, really great to be here. So you wrote this article a couple of weeks ago for Film Companion about... 10 films that we're excited about that are coming in the Hindi film industry in 2019. So we're going to kind of go through, even beyond 10, just films that we're excited about that are um, coming in the next couple of months. We've had a couple of films that have opened up. We had Mani Karnika, Mani Karnika this weekend, which I did see and my review will be up shortly. That that was something. <laughs> uh, did, did you manage, Did you get to see it as well? Uh, yes, I did. I did. I again, I agree with you. I think it was uh, very, very disappointing, and uh, it was very sad because I thought with that one, uh, you you saw in moments what it could have been. And yeah. That and that was so. There was so much potential and promise there. It was almost like a, a female Bahubali, which would be such a cool idea if they pulled it off. But yeah. unfortunately, they didn't. Well, uh, so, yeah, it was yeah. this. It was actually the same scriptwriter that wrote the Bahubali films. It, Exactly, and yeah. uh, now that the film was released and there were some news articles and Krish and Sonu Sood kind of finally opened up. And, and you know, at first, while I was watching the film, I was thinking to myself, I wonder how much is Kangana because she gets first director credit and how much is Krish. And we know a little bit more about that because I did feel like the battle scenes were very good, but evidently that was Krish's contribution yeah. that remains pretty much intact. And my feeling was that the supporting characters didn't have enough time. And that's basically the story that came out from the interviews this weekend. So, you know, that Sonu Sood's part was cut, cut so much that he left the film basically. So I think it's stronger when you have a hero, a hero or heroine who has a strong antagonist. And when you kind of take that away, it takes away from the story. So I haven't seen Thackeray. That's the other big release that came out this weekend. It did come to Chicago, but I didn't have time to see it. Were you able to see Thackeray? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. Uh, yeah. I'll probably catch it sometime in the week, but no, not yet. Uh, it hasn't had the best reviews, but a film like that, the aim is never to make an honest film. If you make, uh, you know, you have a very divisive character who would make for a fascinating film. If you go for the honest approach, but that's not typically how we do things. And yeah. uh, if you make a film like that, related the guys produced it which i think says enough mm. um especially with very divisive figures so yeah it, it's uh, it's pretty dangerous territory um yeah how yeah how has uri been doing in the box office and that's the other big film that came out uh, a uh, week or two ago success uh, i think everyone keeps throwing figures out but, but in short it's doing really really well um I mean, I'm excited yeah. for Vicky Koshal. I haven't seen the film yet, but I'm just excited for him. He's had such a great year last year. So many great supporting roles and other successful films. He blew me away in Manmarzia. I mean, that was just one amazing performance. And then there was Razi. And I'm like, you just keep the list just keeps going and going and going. And I, he actually tweeted back to me when I said I was thrilled for him that he was getting this leading role when the trailer first came out which you had to peel me off the ceiling for that one <laughs> but, <laughs> but i no, am he's... yeah i'm excited for him that he's kind of reaching that next level so and he's he's in Open one of the, the upcoming seat. um films with from from dharma productions right i think uh yes so he's in karan Johar's next directorial film yeah uh, so it's he... called Duck. but um but no so he's he's literally broken onto the scene so i think a lot of people knew him from masan and a lot of sort of cinephiles or the guys, but in terms of the mainstream space, he was sort of a smaller voice. But this year, he literally has gone from zero to sixty. Yeah, um, like three massive films, and now he's uh, and and Uri was actually a risk once they put it together because there was no, I mean, uh, from a commercial perspective, they didn't know if he was going to be able to lead a film and bring mm. the audiences and all those things. But he, by the time they got it, it was such a safe bet, and he's really become like a, a very mainstream known star at this point, which, which is great because that's what you want. You want actors to. When I say actors, I mean actors to, yeah. you know, uh, become stars. That's the ideal uh, space. So good for him. Definitely. I know. I, I'm just, I'm really happy for him. It, war movies are not really my thing. So I may go try to see it this week. It's still playing here in Chicago. I think it's had, I think it almost went away. It was down to a couple showings. And then it's been such a success that they brought it back for a full uh, slate of showings every day. But 
yeah, I it's uh I'm glad for him even if I I don't know all of the shades of meaning of the political stuff that's in the film, but I'm just from the trailer it seemed very strong. It seemed very much like Zero Dark 30 uh kind of So a it film. literally is. It's uh when you watch it it's entirely mounted on Zero Dark 30. The only difference is I I think in Zero Dark 30 the essence of the film if you will is everything that almost leads up to your final sort of combat sequence where they go and for the you know uh, like the assassination or whatever you want to call it. But the essence of the film is the fact-finding, it's the research, it's the painstaking process. Whereas this, it's more about the action. Right. It's all this sort of build-up to this big lot. Um, I found it slightly conflicting because, like you said, there is the bl- political angle which you really can't get out of because it's there and it's in your face. Having said that, on an action or war movie front, it, it achieves things that we've never seen in Hindi cinema. We're yeah. not exactly known for action films whatsoever. We're not known for execution or precision or, you know, just these slickly well-made action films, which, and this is just that. So um, overall, it, like, yeah. I can't take away from its achievement. But, it just uh, seemed, even from the trailer, it just seemed to be a novel, another level. And, yeah, uh, exactly. And so, yeah, I'm happy for Vicky. I only wish him the best success. So, all right. So now let's get into some of the films that we're looking forward to. Um, coming up in February, this is, was not one that was on your list, but the Sonam Kapoor, Anil Kapoor, yes. lesbian love story. I cannot wait for this movie. You don't even know. Like, I am just yeah, it is, so excited. Yeah, it was literally, my, it was my number one runner-up on that one. But um, yes, I think it's one of the most look forward to films. Of the year. Easily, it's it's got everything you're looking for. It's, it's, it's you know, a female director. It's, it's a subject that, like, you have been waiting for on uh, it's also a little worrying because I'm so glad they're doing this, but you you better land it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't exactly. get to have this attempt and not uh, run with it and really do something with it. Um, I, what's really amazing about this is obviously, as you said, it's it's looking at sort of a, a lesbian lo- love story, but um, and more I think the family acceptance of it. But um, what's amazing is with the trailer, um, they haven't made it very obvious that that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, which is a very smart, almost like important way to market that film in India because if you sort of go and gung ho there's going to be pushback to put it lightly um so they've done it very very sensibly and it's one of those things where hopefully it'll draw crowds in people will watch it and if the film does its job they'll come out sort of better off but yeah big fingers crossed i think i know i i I just have a level of nervousness but kudos to sonam and anil for putting you know their full stamp on this and and I, I was just reading something about how the title, how um, gay and lesbian audiences have had to use uh, songs like that and just make them their own, you know, because they yeah. didn't have representation in cinema and the way that they would want to. And, and not just uh, somebody who's like the best friend or something, that's, <laughs> you know, it's just so that is another sly thing of using that title the same way. Um, that the lesbian community might have used that song, I think is awesome. And Raj Kumar Rao, I can imagine other other film actors possibly hesitating to be a part of a film like this, but knowing him and that he was in Aligar, I'm sure he was like, yeah, where do I sign? Let me just, let me yeah. do this film with yeah. you. And I also, I'm so excited, just when I watched the trailer, I'm like, Joey, Joey's in the movie with Anil! <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm sure that will bring a lot of people in too, just seeing her back on screen is so exciting 100 percent, and i think um i think like you said the nervousness with this it's a genius title for sure and um you're excited but i think that for me the big nervousness is, is sona kapoor because she isn't known to be the best actor um but then she did she goes and does a ninja which was phenomenal it was and then, you know suddenly you think you know what is this the game changer and then i was really looking forward to what she does next but i still feel uh, she did Bad Man, which which I thought she was okay in, and then yeah, she, she did okay. uh, Vida uh, the Wedding, which I I didn't sort of really connect with her performance. So for me, it's like I, I'm so glad you're doing it, but you know you can't mess this up. So please, you know I hope she's on top form. Is, is I guess all I want to say. Yeah, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I know. I'm just. Uh, it's it's funny to me how there's been messages in films, and and that it seems like mainstream audiences just totally miss them. What was that New York film that Karen Johar was in? Was that, what was that called? Uh, Welcome to New York or? Uh, oh yeah, Welcome to New York, yeah, yeah that's I mean, or no, there, I mean, there was some movie where he was in it 
and or Shandar, Shandar that he played Shandar, himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was actually sitting in an empty theater with my next door neighbor who's from India, and she turns, she's like, "Is Karan Johar gay?" And I'm like, "Is water wet?" Like, <laughs> I mean, it was like I was like. <laughs> I think uh, Shandar is actually one of my favorite bad movies in the sense that, like, I feel like it has. There's a lot going for that film. It's, it's, it, uh, it doesn't get its due. I mean, it, it, there is a lot of stuff that doesn't work, but the stuff that does is is weirdly enjoyable. I, yeah, I think it does and get you can't beat film. a song with tuba, <laughs> gulabo. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah, my um, son. No, my, think... Yeah, my son plays the tuba, so I love. I love that. I love that song. It had great music. Shahid is a great dancer. It did have a yeah. lot going for it. I like that whole the dance number with the mustaches on the women. The whole thing, but yeah, I mean that one just. I don't know. It fell flat. So speaking of Shahid Kapoor, another film that I'm really nervous about because have you seen the original Telugu Arjun Reddy? Uh, Arjun Reddy, yes. I'm. I'm a really big fan. I thought it was. It was a great, great movie. Um, um, while, yeah, while I like Shahid Kapoor, let me tell you, I am really nervous. Even though the the same director is doing the remake in Hindi, I'm and evidently he's saying he can go further than he was able to go with the Telugu censors. I'm still nervous about it. For those that don't know, Arjun Reddy, it's a love story, but kind of a warp love story. And the interval point, our hero, uh, played by Vijay Devarakanda, actually overdoses and pees his pants. Like, I couldn't, I was sitting there in the theater with my jaw on the floor, like, whoa, whoa. I saw it's that. It's a very, f- like, uh, through your textbook, sort of self destructive love story, you know, yeah. like very Devdas esque. Yes. It goes on a uh, uh, But it, it was really interesting. And uh, in my understanding, for Telugu cinema specifically, it was a big. It was huge. Yeah. I Um, saw it twice in the first week. I just, I I was so taken with it, dragged a friend and we went, I went to see it again. The second, and and it's, it's such an impactful film and VJ made such a mark and it was very different than a masala kind of Telugu typical film. And I'm, I'm really nervous about this remake. So I, I, now they just had, they just had bad news this week. They had someone killed on the set, which has got to have been uh, really horrible. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, yeah, that's obviously very, very sort of sad, but, um, I think like you said, it's, it's heartening that you have the same director, um, which, which make, gives you a little bit more hope. Um, it, but I think when they do remakes of this kind, this sort of two ways they go about it, I'm either going to make a scene for scene remake which I guess is sort of doesn't really work out. Or what, what I'm looking for is sort of a Bollywood adaptation. So how do you take the story? I think the best, it's almost like when you do a book adaptation, you, you're not yeah. really trying to recreate it exactly. You're trying to, how can you make this come to life? What is it? Uh, I think the best example of this is, is Shubh Mangal Sardhan from 2016, I think. Okay. Um, or 2017, sorry. And because that was wonderful because it was the same director who remade his film uh, from Tamil to, to uh, Hindi with sort of Aishwan Purana and Pumi. And it wasn't the same story. He took the same premise and did something completely different with it and really rooted it sort of in in sort of small town India. And it was so wonderful. Um, so yeah, it's, they've, it's they've that... changed the title to Kabir Singh. So yeah. wh- what does that evoke to you? What does that title evoke to you then? It's literally the, the, book, the only one thing that evokes in my mind is just North Indian. Arjun Reddy is obviously a very, you know, overtly uh, South Indian name. Reddy is, is obviously popular. And there, Kabir Singh is almost like you're taking your, you're making it the Punjabi version of that. Okay. It's your most, what is your most generic North Indian name? Uh, again, that comes with the whole Bollywoodization. Of it yeah, to yeah. Make it appeal to that audience. Um, so, so that's that's all it is. It's, it's so, but yeah. Let, let's. I mean, fingers crossed. I really hope they, they do something with this and and they give this story the Hindi film it could be. Um, yeah. I think Shahid Kapoor is uh, when he wants. I I think he's, he's a phenomenal actor. Uh, not when he wants, but in the right roles in the right yeah. situations. I especially unlike Sonam, I think his big breakout was Heather. Yeah. And post Heather, he's been very consistent. I think what he did in Uttar Punjab was fantastic. I thought he was very good in Rangoon. Um, he had a film last year which wasn't so good, but I think he's a great actor with the right material, with the right director. And if, if he'd managed to do that, I'm very excited. I agree with you. I did not see Rangoon, but uh, Uttar Punjab, he was amazing. And Hater was a revelation. I was like, yeah. <laughs> that was one more. Whoa. <laughs> so he, yeah, yeah he, can, he can do the insanity. <laughs> he can, he can go there. I think it's one of the best films we've made in the last sort of decade. 
Um, yeah. So, so uh, yes. Speaking of uh, Uttar Punjab, you have the same director Abhishek Chauve coming up this month, uh, which uh, which is Sonchariya, uh, which is sort of it's like a Dekoit sort of drama, uh, which again I'm very very looking. For. I mean, it's it's the kind of I mean I, the trailer's out and it looks so explosive. It has a hell of a cast. You have sort of Prashant Singh Rajput, Manoj Bajpayee, and Rishori, and I just I loved it. I, I thought that the first look was fantastic. I love Abhishek Chauve and. Uh, Ironically, sort of that sort of bandit movie was such a big part of our history. You know, we've right. had the mainstream stuff like Shole or the yeah. breakout stuff like Bandit Queen, but we haven't seen it in the last sort of ten years or whatever. Um, and it's so exciting. To sort of, it just looks like a very sort of gangster esque, but from the heartlands, but story driven and very sort of uh, rustic. So I'm I'm very excited for that as well. I guess it's sort of like westerns had their heyday in Hollywood, yeah. and then occasionally there's a good, you know, Western that comes back, but it's not an everyday, you know, it's not pr- the kind exactly. of film that's produced all the time. So I think that would yeah. be an interesting, a, a parallel. And yeah. yeah, I agree. I mean, I love Manaj Bajpai so much. <laughs> it was the trailer. I've seen it a couple of times in the theater and I'm really excited to see him in this role. It looks like he really gets to choose some scenery and really gets to, um, play a really interesting character so i'm looking forward to it really much very much so gully boy is the other uh film that's coming just valentine's day but it's actually opening at the bernalinal film festival which is incredible so zoya zoya akhtar uh, any film by zoya akhtar i'm excited about right you you don't even you know you don't even have to to stop right there i'm excited but this while this film kind of seems like eight mile uh from the trailer uh, you know derivative a little bit but it i'm sure there's things that i'm not hearing i hear there's the that alia and um and ron Burr really captured the slang which is not something that my ear can pick up by reading subtitles but i ron beer singing the rap songs so far everything i've heard i'm really excited about this film so i think uh, like i think gully boy's is- Arguably, probably the most uh, anticipated film of, of this year for, for most people. Uh, I think Zoe Akhtar is one of my favorite filmmakers um, for, for obvious reasons. Everything she touches is, is gold to me. And this is her bravest film. It's the one furthest from her comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's tackling something that's very, very specific. It's amazing that we're opening at Berlin. Um, and I, I think in terms of 8 Mile, the problem is that um, I, I, they get that comparison a lot. And they've said before that uh, at its core, any sort of hip hop movie of this kind or looking at a rapper, they, they're all, they have the similar traits, and because that's that's what the movement is about. You have someone from a sort of less privileged back, background really trying to break out into the scene, and it's sort of how you use the art form to come out of your situation and make it big, and sort yeah. of, it's, it's a combination of art and sort of economics and, and sort of social class, and sort of in that, I mean, the, the comparisons are obvious. I think the difference is, is Gully Boy... Is is really rooted in a in a true story here, in the sense that in the last couple of years there's been a massive movement in India in the rap scene from sort of your from sort of the poor sides of society, and and so our biggest um, sort of success uh, examples of success is, is a, a rapper called Divine and Nizi, who have really sort of taken the world by storm, and they have these amazing success stories where sort of they're from the slums and you know they they use sort of rap and now they're sort of selling out back stadiums and things. And so that's, I think, the big differentiator for me is the fact that um, it's about a reality that we're seeing around us today. It's about a movement that's happening in India. Um, and that's probably, what, I mean, again, I haven't seen the film, so hopefully it's not an eight-mile copy, but it's we're, they're trying to capture that reality, which hopefully yeah. means that it'll be something new and fresh. And, and I could not be more excited. Well, some of the things that are unique to an Indian set, an India setting are some of the lines that we saw in the trailer. Like a certain person saying, your father was a driver, that's you. you the only thing that you can be is a driver. That's yeah. not something that somebody would necessarily say in America, you know, um, yeah. uh, where Eminem was working in Detroit in a car manufacturing factory. Well, that doesn't mean that he, you know, he wasn't restricted necessarily that that was his life he was a you know trailer trash kind of a per kind of a background but it's just a different it's a very different thing and also just the the pressure of what do you mean you want to be an artist um you know that the father h- has that explosive fight in the trailer with with ron beer's character of just you know 
yeah. you know, you can't, you can, what do you mean you want to do that? Like <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. And that's just a yeah. very, um, that's just a very different thing. And I also absolutely love the little, little glimpse that we're get, seeing of Alia's character. Here she is in a headscarf and she's so feisty and sarcastic. And I, um, you know, like that little line, you know, when somebody asks her if she cooks and she's like, no, but I could do a liver transplant on you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm really excited to see more about her character. Yeah. And I think, um, I think there's actually something quite nice about the idea that, you know, the, the whole idea of sort of universality is actually the reason an eight mile would be similar to this is, you know, like there is a lot of things that are very common across the world. You have people from sort of less privileged backgrounds and how they use an art form to, to challenge that and talk about that and then sort of rise above it. Uh, and, and it happens all over the world. Uh, having said that, this is a very Indian story. I think more than that, it's a very Bombay story um, because it's very much rooted in life here. But to your point, it's actually very interesting in terms of what you mentioned about slang, because so much about this is very much sort of, you know, forget India, it's a very much Bombay-based slang. So it's interesting with subtitles, how they translate that across, um, because that's always a very interesting thing. I think Deadpool is a great example of this, where when Deadpool came out in India, it's obviously, obviously it came out in English, but they also did a couple of Hindi dubs as well. And it, it, it went viral because they changed a lot of the references. They had to basically mm. Indianify all these sort of quips and things. And whoever right. wrote that did such a great job. <laughs> so it's almost like you're you're kind of changing the material as in how do I keep this to an, how do I translate this slang to an international audience whether it's the references or whether it's swear words whatever you want to call it how do I really relate the spirit of what this person's saying which is interesting to see how they do that well one thing about Deadpool just let me tell you that I was the only one in my theater laughing at the song that plays in the taxi driver's <laughs> car when Deadpool is in the car like I'm the, they kept that reference in because I think the uh, producers are Indian American um, of, of Deadpool and so <laughs> They kept it in there. That was amazing. I remember <laughs> when we heard that, I was like, yes, that's, that's the closest <laughs> we're going to get to uh, an Indian superhero all day. Yeah, my husband's next to me elbowing me. I'm like, <laughs> like yeah, I know that one. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's move on to some of these other films. Photograph, starring Nawaz Siddiqui, actually had its premiere. We're filming this on Sunday, Chicago time, Monday, uh, Mumbai time. It had its premiere this weekend at Sundance Film Festival in Utah, and rave reviews already have just come out. So I, we expect pretty much anything with Nawaz Siddiqui. He's such a great actor, and especially this director has been a long time to wait for a new film. I can't. I don't know. Sometimes I've heard it also was pre-bought before it even aired. Sometimes they do the deal. Uh, before the film even oh, screens? I think, it's, I think it's because it was with Amazon before, because Vitesh Bhattra, who's the director, is actually probably uh, our biggest export in terms, yeah. of, uh, in terms of an Indian Um So I think he was, they, they were fine on, on that side. But yeah, I'm incredibly excited because I think he's, uh, so obviously he made The Lunchbox here, which is one of the most iconic uh, Indian films we've made in recent times. And, and it really put Indian cinema on the map because as you it know, did. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, to a lot of people, it's very difficult to engage with Indian cinema if you're not familiar with it. And that lunchbox did so much for us. Um, and then he went off and he was in Hollywood doing some great stuff. He did uh, A Sense of an Ending um, with some great actors. And then he did, which was one of my favorite films of 2017, um, the Netflix films, uh, next to Our Souls at Night with Robert Redford. Oh, I didn't um, see that one. It, it's, it's just a wonderful film. It's Jane Fonda and uh, Robert Redford. Um, so literally he was finishing Sense of an Ending and he just gets a call from Robert Redford saying, I want to make a movie with you. Um, wow. and, and that's what I love so much about Photograph. He's this Indian director who's making these, this great, these great films. He runs off to do these sort of uh, films in the art space in, in the West and he's really being sort of lauded. He's on all kinds of lists. He doesn't need to do a film. Like he's, Ritesh Patra is set for life at this point. He can, you know, take his choice of yeah. script. Uh, and yet he chooses to come back and do a photograph with the Nawazuddin and Sanya Malhotra, which, which is very heartening and exciting. And I'm just, well, I'm just so glad. I can imagine uh, he probably wanted to work with Nawazuddin again, too. I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to see that film. So I don't know. It's interesting. Um, having attended the Sundance Film Festival several times, Netflix and Amazon are such huge players of buying um, independent cinema now. 
And yeah. this year's Oscars, there's a couple of Netflix movies. It's really a game changer because they do get a theatrical release, but they have such a wider reach because so many people have Netflix or Amazon Prime. And these smaller films that might have only played in major metropolitan cities now have an opportunity to have a much wider audience right away. So Roma True. is the perfect example of that yeah. this year for the Oscars. But anyway, in that in the lunchbox was hu among independent cinema go kind of uh, people who like to watch that kind of film. It was huge here <laughs> in the U S yeah, just... was. I think um, because obviously here everyone's talking about the big hall, like the stars and things like that, the commercial vehicles, but I don't think people really appreciate how much money the lunchbox made abroad. Like it literally sort of was, it was massive outside India um, in, in all kinds of countries in the West and Europe and, and the U S. So it, it's just such a great example of, hey, you know, if you make a great movie, uh, forget sort of the packaging and, and, and the sort of glamorizing of it. it it's just going to sell. Um, well, and do great. yeah. And not only that, but it's, um, I mean, it's just, it's just such a good film. And it, it put Irfan Khan so much on, on the map for a, yeah. a lot of uh, Western audiences. I mean, <laughs> to the point that he was in the Jurassic Park film recently, or whatever, which cracks me up. But, um, yeah, I just that was the first film I think that I saw Nawazuddin and Siddiqui. And yeah. and well, for most people to you know in the West and he's just such an amazing actor. So so excited about this film. I don't know, do you know what the release date in India have they set it uh, yet? So I know that they they're in Sundance now they're going to go to Berlin after that. Um I think I've I've read somewhere that it's sometime in March. Okay, um, so not too much so, longer to wait. Very good. Yes, um, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. And I think more than anything, with the Ritesh Patra, who's now an acclaimed director in the West, and it, launching at Sundance, it's more like, um, it's platformed pretty well in the sense that hopefully it will really attract a Western audience to it and uh, and discover Navas, like you said, because I think um, I think he's just uh, something waiting to explode uh, abroad as well. So let's see. Yeah. I mean, I think I was one of the few people when I saw the film Lion uh, with Dev Patel. And then when, yeah. I, when I, he had a small cameo part in yep. that. And I was just like, when I saw that he was on the list of the cast and I'm like, I bet he plays some sort of creepy. I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> He's also I mean, done an international series. Uh, it's called Mick Mafia. It's, I think it's a BBC crime series. And he has a small part in that playing sort of like an Indian Don. Um, so he's, he's had these little sort of steps, but we haven't seen the big definitive Navas blowout film abroad. So let's, let's fingers crossed. Yeah. So, okay, so that's coming out in March, so I'm excited about that. And then uh, there was another film that, well, I'll go down the list of your articles. So, Brahmastra, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that film? Yes, so this is uh, Ayan Mukherjee, who I think, uh, sort of next to Zoya, is one of my favorite uh, mainstream filmmakers in India. So he's made, uh, he made Wake Up Sid, yeah. which is his first one with Ranveer, then he made Yejivani Hadevani. And, um, and similar to her, he's actually taken his bravest sort of they've kept these urban films traditionally and now she's a boy and he's gone for this big massive canvas film where not much is known about it but what we know is it's got Alia Bhatt, it's got Ranbir and it's got Amitabh Bachchan and they've they've they're uh, visualizing it as a as a big sort of fantasy trilogy which again we haven't really seen in Hindi cinema much and this is another Bahubali impact like if you look at the next two years there are about 11 Bahubali's coming out because it's wow. had such a massive impact. Everyone's looking at scale. Everyone's looking at period epics. And so this one, um, so it's getting a lot of buzz as an Indian superhero film, which he's frequently denied saying it's, it's not in that space. It's more of a you know, sort of fantasy-esque space. So we don't know much about it, but it's it's incredibly exciting. And, and Parma's really sort of going, which is Karan Johar's production house, is really going all in. And it's, it's a big bet. And I'm, I'm incredibly looking forward to this. And we're just not used to sort of commitment and trilogies and sequels uh, in, in India, which is why, uh, at least in Hindi cinema, which is why Bahubali sort of changed the game so much. Um, and so, so I really, I mean, he's, I really, really hope that, you know, this pays off and it's everything we hope, um, both technically and visually and, and storytelling wise. So that one, is that coming out much later in the year towards the end of that's the year? That's December. Yeah. yeah okay. That's so December. that's like Christmas, Christmas release. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I had heard rumors of Ron Beer doing a superhero kind of movie and I went, but now <laughs> hearing more about it and what exactly it might be i'm more excited about it, especially this director because it's been six 
long years we've been yeah. waiting for the next movie. Six Which long years. Because <laughs> I guess, I think finally he's been working on this for years and there's a lot of talk about like he's going all out with the visuals and things like that. So that remains to be seen. But I think with this, it literally comes down to trust. Like I, like an Indian superhero film doesn't sound, like it sounds scary, but in the right hands, you know, you, you have more faith. And I mean, I, I really think that if anyone can do something with it, he's, he's one of the names that could. So well, fingers I mean, crossed again. I may be one of the few people. I really liked Babesh Joshi. I mean, that wasn't a bad. I, I liked it. I liked it. I really um, liked it. I mean, uh, I guess Vicky Koshal almost might have been attached to that one. Maybe he would have been better than Harsh, but I still liked it. I thought it was really creative and really well done. So um, I have not I seen agree. Tiger Shroff's. Uh, what was that? Fly, flying Jot? Uh, flying Jot. Yeah. yeah. That, I don't think that's a part of this conversation. That, <laughs> that has no place. No. Um, Tiger Shroff is an industry unto himself. He, he, uh, he yeah. defies the laws of physics and logic, and that's, that's his business. Um, having said that, there are rumors that he is doing something in Hollywood. I don't know how true that is. Really? There was some oh. I mean, there were some news articles recently, so... Uh, I don't know how I'd feel. Like, you have Priyanka Chopra out there representing us so well. I don't know if Tiger Shroff will really do the same thing. But, well, um, um, he's the kind of person that I could see doing well in, like, the Fast and Furious kind of franchise or something like that. You know, an action kind of a thing, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully. I mean, I think his film choices haven't been too inspiring. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Okay, let me, uh, let me just tell you that... I don't know what it is, but I just have a thing about Tiger Shroff. Like I have not seen Buggy, I have not seen his Buggy films. I had just, and I'm really like student of the year too. Like oh, <laughs> yeah, no, student of the year two is definitely not on my list. Um, but no, no? I, I think with Tiger Shroff, <laughs> with Tiger you. Shroff, uh, people tend to have like tend to be split. Some people say like, look at his, you know, like. The, the, the action and the poetry in motion and all that kind of stuff and it's just like that's great the guy can dance and do backflips which is amazing to watch for five minutes what are you gonna do the other two hours of your film um and he's he's quite clearly championing like a certain kind of masala cinema which which i don't really engage with but having said that student of the year even though i'm not very excited for it um is very different to what he's done before in the yeah, sense that he's very much is. stuck to his action space so this is i guess doing some sort of high school-esque drama which by the way is apparently has a will smith song in it uh, Will Smith came down. To... I know, I saw that. It's pretty pathetic. Um, I mean, there's 19 other things I wish he was a part of instead of that one, but it's fine, I guess. Uh, hey, it's do? a bucket list. It's something he's always, evidently always wanted to do, so let them in. Which do is it. amazing, but like, if you can put Will Smith in a film in Bollywood, why, why are you going to the lowest? Of the, of well, the maybe that's all you can get is his time for one song, so look at it that way. So. Fair enough. <laughs> You take what you can get. <laughs> okay, so uh, I because it was on your list, I watched the ama amazing trailer. I'm gonna murder this title, Mard Kodard Nahotra. Nahotra. Yeah. <laughs> it was this an is, absolutely uh, amazing trailer. Yeah. Oh my god! It is. It is. This is. I, I. I don't. I mean, by calling this Bollywood, I feel like it's something so different. So this is Vasan Bala, who's uh, who's sort of one of Anurag Kashyap's. He has this whole roster of filmmakers who've worked with him. He's one of them. He's he's done all kinds of stuff in the past. He wrote Raman Raghav, which is yeah. uh, Anurag's film. He he made a film called Peddlers, which hasn't been released yet, which is supposed to be great. But he's been in the indie space, and um, and he really wanted to make an action film. And this film it, that's made waves. It's one of those really annoying films that happens where it's like Photograph. It'll make waves abroad. You read all these reviews of an Indian film that's going doing so well overseas, and you just but we haven't got a chance to see it. So it's like when is it my turn? Um, like I don't, was yeah, at, I don't know if you watched it with the subtitles on, but even the subtitles were incredible. Were so well done. Because yeah, the so subtitles well looked like they they were like a mixtape or a video cassette, and like red writing on on the the label. It was I've never seen anything like it. It was amazing. It was very cool. Just uh, for people who don't know, it's it's basically uh, he's trying to make like again a very innovative superhero self referential film, and it's about uh, a. a guy who has a, a disorder where he feels no pain so he goes out and tries to sort of kick ass and, and sort of save people and it just looks and it's supposed to be this massive ode to action movies and superhero movies where it's very somebody uh, this uh, competitive Deadpool where it's very sort of it keeps yeah. making jokes at itself and, and the industry as well and it, it went to TIFF and it won the audience choice award and it's been doing so well abroad so it's like I really wanted to release here um, 
Yeah. I think April is when it's supposed to come out. So let's see. Very, very cool. I I mean, it's no one in it, anyone that I recognize, but I yeah, I hope it really makes a mark because it's so different and quirky looking. It it's just looks cool. amazing. It's, yeah, just yeah. so cool. And like you say, just he's he's in the trailer, he's walking in the street and he's kind of explaining how he has all these powers and then things happen to him and he's bleeding and he's just like, yeah, I feel no pain. <laughs> <laughs> the blood is just dripping down, and it just so many little quirky things of him as a little kid, and and <laughs> just wow, it, it just has kind of this black humor to it, this dark humor that I really love. So I'm excited about that film very much. I hope it comes to Chicago. Like, uh, I, I hope it does. I mean, yeah. it has it's, it's had it's been to a couple of festivals in the U.S., so hopefully that happens. But yeah, again, yeah. very very excited for that. So the sky is pink. So this is the same filmmaker as Margarita with a Straw, which I is yes. on my list that I have not seen yet. But I know everyone has talked about how good that film is. So um, tell me a little bit about the sky is pink. So yeah, like you said, it's the filmmaker of Margarita with a Straw, Shanali Post, and um, I, to this day, it's, it's one of the most interesting uh, Hindi or Indian films I've seen because it's made with such a Western aesthetic in the sense that you know we're so used to a specific kind of storytelling. Whereas when I watched that film, I just, I was watching people I knew, sort of Indian people, people that I've interacted with, but it was, the approach was so, I didn't see any of the melodrama, I didn't see any of the sort of overdone anything, it was just so natural, almost like, yeah, it was just literally so sort of restrained, and I just, I was like, I, I literally felt like a, a an indie filmmaker from abroad had come into India uh, to make that film, and so, so yeah, so I think everyone was really excited for her next and this is obviously, I think the big one with this is it's got Zara I think is a phenomenal actress, um, who was in Secret Superstar, and she's one of the young girls from Bengal. Uh, but I think yeah. probably most interestingly, this is Priyanka Chopra's big definitive comeback film in Hindi cinema, which we've all been so excited for for the longest time. And I'm so glad that she chose this one, um, because it just seems right. Uh, the story is, it's, it's a true story about a, a young girl who had, uh, I believe she had sort of a, sort of a life-threatening sort of disease, uh, which sort of impacted her lifespan and she didn't live long. But rather than sort of being, uh, she basically used it to become like a motivational speaker mm. and, and really sort of own it and started a movement and wrote a book and things. And she was this massive sort of uh, figure of, of, of motivation and things. And so, so yeah, this is a story of, of her life, which is obviously Zaira of Seaman. Her parents are played by Farhan Akhtar and Priyanka Chopra. And it just... Just, it has all the right elements to it. Like it just, so, it just I'm not. I'm not so excited necessarily about Priyanka. That's okay. I'm <laughs> excited about Zara Wasim having a new film because she was so amazing in Secret Superstar. Was she was so she was. good. So I'm excited for her that she's getting a big film like this. And yeah. I, and the producer RSVP Films. It's like all of a sudden I am seeing trailers from this production house everywhere. And it's like when I see those typewriter keys. I'm like, oh, this is going to be interesting. Whatever is coming next, this trailer is going to be interesting. It's like ex like an explosion of all of these really interesting films from this one production house. Yeah, so RSVP is, is uh, from Ronnie Skruvala, who's actually one of the most like celebrated uh, producers in, in Hindi cinema for the longest time. And he, so he produced a whole bunch of films back in the day, and then he quit produced production for a while because he's like, I'm done with this. And then I guess he got convinced to come back, and he started this new outfit, and he's done Uri and... Kedarnath and now Marco Darneota and uh, Sky Pink, uh, which is also Siddharth Roy Kapoor pictures. So, um, so yeah, they seem to have a very thing they're going for, which is it's got a mainstream element, but it's very content back or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, anything they touch seems to be something to look forward to for sure. So, Kalak, that's the big film. <laughs> Sanjay, <Yeah. that's, laughs> I mean, this was supposed to be Sri Devi coming back and doing this big film. And then, of course, she passed away. But now we have Midori Dixon. Like, <laughs> right there alone. But it's such a big multi-star. Like, I can't even... You look at the list of all the people that are in this movie. I can't, I can't wait. June or whatever can I come soon enough. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, like I said, I, I think this is another one that really comes down to the Bahubali effect, where, it, again, it's not, I think it's period, it's not that far back, but it's this whole idea of massive scale, budget, visuals, big star cast. And we have about six of them coming this year, a whole bunch next year. Um, I think for me, what's most interesting about this one is it's Abhishek Var Varman who made Two States, 
Yeah. And it's another director who who made a film that was so promising that, and I didn't expect to. And you're really excited to see what this guy will do next. And then he disappeared for whatever yeah. reason. And now he's back with this. And it's it's very, very exciting. Yeah, I mean, Two States was definitely on a completely different scale. and But it is one of my most loved films. That soundtrack was amazing. Oh, my gosh. How much, you can don't even know how much I love that movie and how many times I've watched it. And and then it's like to think about how long he's just been gone. And this is such a different kind of a film. It's just a completely different scale. So I'm excited for this director. But it's like you've also another one. You've made us wait so long. <laughs> and just that cast. I think you have Vaan Bhavan, Alia Bhatt, uh, Aditya Roy Kapoor, Sunakshi Sinha, uh, Madhuri Dikshit. So, uh, I mean, the yeah. list just keeps going on and on. And... Yeah, it's really exciting. All the people that are going to be in this movie, uh, I yeah, I hope it lives up to all of my heightened expectations of what this film could be. But just the idea of Midori doing some sort of dance number again on screen, like, oh, <laughs> can I wait? I can't wait. <laughs> I hope so, now. I hope so. Okay, so tell me about Hunter. Uh, I don't know a lot about this film. It sounds like there's not a lot about it. It's Navdeep Singh's next film. Yes. So, uh, which in itself, I think, is a big selling point. Navdeep Singh is, is again, one of our most interesting filmmakers. He made NH10 with Anushka, which was this yeah. iconic breakout film where, like, it was, <laughs> even to this day, uh, I, I remember when I watched that film, I, I watched it at home, and I couldn't watch more than 15 minutes of it without pausing, catching my breath, because it's no just kidding. so intense I and know. violent and scary, and just a fantastic film, um, but not exactly a happy one i know and, i bought um, that one on dvd and i don't literally know if i can ever watch it again it's so intense and so and wow i mean for anushka sharma to start her production company with that film yeah. amazing what an amazing statement and it was so such a different our picture of what Anushka Sharma was, it was such a different kind of role. Here she was the one rescuing, I can't remember if it was a fiancé or a husband, here she's trying to rescue him. And I will, you'll, you'll never forget her dragging that pipe with the sound yeah. of it going down the street. Like, you'll never, <laughs> I know, right? right? You just get a shiver just think thinking it about it. A really, uh, some really fantastic supporting characters. I remember the, the mother in that film. Yes, the, yeah. The, the bad side of things, where it's, it's the last thing you'd expect that this person's a mastermind or whatever. And it's such a well-made film, such an intense, gripping film. Um, again, something that we don't see enough of. Um, so yeah, he's making a film called Hunter with Saif Ali Khan. Uh, and it's supposed to be about sort of a, like a revenge tale. We haven't seen much. There's one look of the film that's come out of Saif and Cotton. Um, with Seth, he's, he's, he's very, very interesting because I think he's had a really tough time for a couple of years where he just couldn't find his feet and find a film that matched his sensibilities. Then he goes off and does a Sacred Games, which is perfect. And yeah. it's just, it's fantastic. It's Amazing. Great. Amazing. Uh, and so it's, again, and after that, sort of, he's still, it's just interesting. It's sort of like his rebirth in that sense. So, um, so yeah, let, let's see what it is. But like, if, if it's, again, another sort of dark, gritty drama, I think we are all very much sold for that. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited that um, Safe is working with a director like this because, yeah, I'm expecting ho and hoping, crossing my fingers, that it will be as good as NH10 was. <laughs> Which, like, to have that kind of an impact, like both of us, like, it was, like, yeah. I, like you say, it was so intense. Like, you couldn't. I don't even know what it, I watched it at home too, and I don't even know what it would have been like if I was in a theater where I couldn't escape oh, yeah. and having yeah. the full sound of yeah. effect of that. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so would, I'm excited. I mean, Bizarre was decent. That's say probably kind. Of, I mean, he was decent in it. Let's put it that yeah. way. Um, but you're right. He's sort of at this turning point in his career. Sacred Games was absolutely amazing and i know he deserved all the acclaim that he got for that for that and i yeah I'm, it's but he's in that kind of where does he find like you say where does he find his footing how does he pivot how does he, and so this sounds really like something that would really be good uh for him so i'm excited for him and and so that's coming out much later in the year is it or do yes. we know yeah Yes. Uh, so we, again, we don't know much about the film. We've seen one look of him on set, so it's going to take a couple of months for sure. So, and then we have, the last one on your list was Badla, which uh, Topsy Panu, what a year she had in 2018. Yes. 
And so anything that she wants to do next, I'm ready to see. But this one looks really exciting. It is. So this is obviously considered one of the great thriller filmmakers. So he made Kahani, which again, I think yeah. is, is a film which just completely changed the game with Vidya Balan. It's one of the best films we've made uh, yeah. recently. Uh, after that, he has another best time he made. He produced a film called Teen, which again was in a similar space that didn't do too well. He did Kahani 2 with again Vidya Balan again, which was competent and decent, it, but it wasn't as iconic and path-breaking as the first. Um, so again, so he, this is him making uh, a thriller with, with Amitabh and uh, Tapti Pannu. It's a remake of a Korean film, uh, which again is something on the revenge side of things, uh, which I haven't seen, but it's, it's very, very interesting. So hopefully he gets his groove back and uh, it is everything we hope it is. Um, so, but th that was the last one on my list, but I have a whole, I have like a sub list of things <laughs> I wish I could have added on there. Well, I'll um, tell you, I'll tell you what my most anticipated yeah. Hindi film is. And that is yeah. besides all the ones that we mentioned, and that's yeah. the Zoya factor. Now I can tell you're not a huge Sonam factor, phone, Sonam fan, but she's not the reason I'm excited about it. It's because it's Dulker Dul Salman. Dulker! We, all, <laughs> we all massive uh, Dulker fans, which is also... Why I was so annoyed last year with Carva was fell flat. I, I really it didn't work for me at all. Um, and I was I was like, how dare you take this person and make give him his big Hollywood uh, sorry Bollywood debut and you have him across Irfan Khan and 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 Mithila Palkar, who's a very big sort of actress in the web space and there's no way you can mess this film up. But it it, it did not live up to what it could have been. Um, so I yeah, hope I I agree with you, but I I'm also wondering if he wanted to just kind of stick a toe in. And not necessarily do the full fledged big Bollywood movie True. to to start and and also I could see from an outsider saying I get to work with Irfan Khan I don't care what it is I'll do it you know I, I agree I don't I, it, doing that film was a no brainer and, and when I watched the trailer I thought there's no way this is gonna be terrible it, it was on my list of I'm so excited for this last year um, it's more it's it's how the film pan, pan, panned out it, it's sort of the result of it which I felt was which not anywhere close to what it should have been um, so hopefully Zoya Factor will give him the, the launch he deserves uh, and should have showcased his talent in, in the right way uh, it's based on a book uh, about uh, it, it's based on, on, on cricket and how I believe that Sun well, I've, I've actually who's... I've actually read the book so the book oh, is okay, <laughs> Uh, was evidently uh, kind of a romance bestseller in India, and it's written by someone who worked in the ad industry. So Zoya is someone uh, who's working for advertising, but sort of she becomes sort of the good luck charm of the national cricket team. And Dulker is playing the captain of the team, who is very s skeptical of all of this. But when the other players, like, if she doesn't have breakfast with us, we're going to lose, you know, kind of a thing. She has to come to Australia with us or we're going to lose, you know. And he's rolling his eyes. So it's this, antic this um, you know, antagonism between the two of them, but also the love story. And so... I, as I was reading it, I knew Dolker was, uh, and I was just like, oh, I could totally picture him doing this part. And Sonam, I think, will do, uh, she's not exactly the way the person is pictured in the, in the book. She's supposed to have these flowing curly locks, but I don't, we'll see. Well, I haven't really, I've seen uh, still pictures of Dolker, uh, but not really her, how she's going to look in the film. But I think the two of them will have good chemistry together. I think it will spark and all the people who saw Carvan and then commented like, who is this Dolker person? I'm like, just you wait. <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> I um, know. I mean, he had a he big has... year last year. He did um, Amanati. A, a Mahanati, which is a huge. It was in multiple languages. It was in Tamil. It was in Telugu. And he dubbed it himself. So that was his first Telugu film. He's yeah. been doing... Um, Tamil films. I mean, of course, he did OK Khan Mini with Vani Ratnam. That's how I first saw him. And then I'm like, yep. what else has this guy done? And then most of his other films are in the Malayalam cinema. So, and fun fact, he went to my son's university. He went to Purdue in Indiana, wow. which every time I walk on the campus, I'm like, I can't even imagine him <laughs> walking that's around. That's why you sent your son there. Yeah. Oh, no, that's totally why I sent my son there. Yeah. <laughs> but... He, he has so, an amazing screen presence. He's he just does. so infinitely likable. It's annoying. <laughs> and um, and when I first saw him, I had absolutely no idea that he was a huge star kid. His father is Mamuti, who's one of the yeah. 
the biggest stars, not just in Malayalam cinema, but all Southern cinema. In fact, his father yeah. is doing um, Yatra, this big biopic film coming out um, in a month or two. So he's, you know, his father is still very much in the industry, but I think, uh, you know, has let just Stalker do his own his own path and. Yeah. It's it seems to be a little bit different than the nepotism in the Hindi industry, but maybe that's maybe maybe that's just the the story they're selling us. I don't know, but he just has that screen presence. He just has that innate charm, and I think yeah. he's going to take Bollywood by storm. So that comes out. I hope he does. I hope and he I does think, too. Uh, he's one of the few people who's really managed to come out under the shadow of his dad. Like when yes. you think of Dulka, you think of Dulka. You don't think of Mamuti. Like. I'm fine, father and son, but they have very different sensibilities, very different kinds of films they do, and it's it's that they, they completely coexist, which is very rare. Um, and so yeah. it's it's great. Uh, and yeah, I think Zoya Factor would be hopefully be what we what we anticipate it could be. Um, yeah. So let's see. So what other films uh, are you that didn't quite make your top ten? Are you looking forward to? So there was another one. Uh, so I, this is, I, I don't know if you've seen it. This is zombie comedy that came out a couple of years ago called Go Go Agon. I've heard uh, of it, but I have not seen it. But I know it's like infamous. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be so again, zany and crazy. This, yeah, it literally is. It, it comes from it, uh, from the same sort of Delhi belly vein. No, nowhere near as good, but it was almost like a stoner comedy where it's just this completely bad shit. Uh, the story literally goes that a bunch of guys go on a Goa trip. Uh, which I guess equates to like the big Vegas trip or whatever. Yeah. And literally overnight, everyone turns into zombies. Seraf is in it, who plays this weird Delhi <laughs> Russian zombie hunter. And he, his best films are always the ones where he is just out of whack, where like he's literally just playing something that's completely nuts. And it was such a great film. It's such a cult film. Uh, and so they're making the sequel with Veer Das, who's now obviously such a big stand-up comedian, and the other cast. Uh, as well, so it's um, it should be really really interesting. I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Um, so let's see. But yeah, I hope they can really sort of live up to the magic of the first. It's from Raj and DK, who are again these very quirky action filmmakers. Um, so uh, so let's see. Yeah, hopefully. So are is... there are there any films that were at the Mumbai Film Festival that premiered there that haven't already come out to a wider audience yet that that you think we should look forward to? That's a good question. I think Marth Kodanayo does exactly that. So we, we, we premiered that. And so that's way to come out. A- apart from that, everything, the, most of the stuff that we showcased was very much in the indie space where you hope it gets a release, but you, you never really know if, yeah. if it's really going to um, uh, take off. So that remains to be seen. But uh, a lot of that stuff, I think, will end up on digital platforms, which is great. Yeah. Um, I think I'm still waiting for Village Rockstars to end up on some platform, which is Rima Das's film. Uh, her second film, Bull Bull Can Sing, is now at Berlin. So these are the kind of films where you, you hope they find their audience and they come out somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I, so, I, I, am, I am really excited. You just did an article also about all the digital streaming platforms available in yeah. India. It was jaw-dropping how many there are. But to me, as if you were here in America, I'm so excited that um, different actresses are starting their own production companies and doing... Yeah. Uh, independent deals with Netflix and Amazon and Sacred Games and Breathe were these premier things where you had it's all it was like an HBO level where you had premier actors yep. doing um doing content for the straight for the streaming platform and they also got to skirt the censors and do yep. Uh, exactly what they wanted to do. We got to see the vision of what they wanted to have. And and I'm just so excited that there's going to be more of that, more of that coming down the pike. Very much so. I think we've had a very weird relationship with web series in the past because it's it's typically been treated as almost like something... It started off as this movement where Indian TV just wasn't living up to the kinds of things that we'd want to see. You know, where where is our Breaking Bad? Why are we not seeing that? And so that's where web sort of came up. And then when Netflix and Amazon came in... Uh, people started to understand, and actors and filmmakers started to understand that actually this this is not a small deal. Uh, it, it gives me more creative vision. Um, so you're getting a lot more sort of your tentpole shows, like a Sacred Games was a game changer, and a lot more like that. Um, it's also interesting because um, it's interesting to see what the filmmakers will do with the freedom. I think a lot of them become sort of almost like kids who are like, okay, I have a new toy, I have to play with it, rather than how do I use this for a story. Yeah. Also, serialized storytelling is not something we've, they're used to. Uh, in in the, in the in the U.S., you have a whole structure behind writers' rooms, and you know there's a whole sort of landscape in place to how that 
all comes together. You have a show on it. It's all sort of in place. Whereas these are very new concepts. Yeah, Sacred Games, uh, Vikramaditya Motwani has sort of talked at length about. I had no idea what a showrunner was. This is the first time anyone's done a, sh- a writer's room in India. So it's, again, it's a new wave of storytelling, and you hope it, it gets used in the right way. But, I mean, I just recently finished Mirzapur on Amazon Prime, and I absolutely loved it. Um, highly recommend if anyone has No, I haven't so, seen that yet. Okay, I'll have to look for that. But, so yeah, I thought I thought Breathe was fantastic, too. Were you able to see that? I haven't seen Breathe, no. Oh! Um, so... <laughs> it's Madhavan and Amit Saad. Yeah. And uh, Ahmed Saad is one of those actors that I really love. And he got to... I'm running shoddy. I'm a, one of the few people that really, really yeah. love that movie. But he really got to shine because it was equal time with Madhavan. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, just, it's just good scripts, you know? I mean, that's yeah. kind of was the theme of last year of... The con- notice names that we have not mentioned once in this entire talk. Amir Khan, we didn't, well, we didn't talk about Bharat, but Bharat is coming up. But, you know, Shah Rukh Khan and Amir Khan, as far as I know, we haven't signed on to any films that will be coming out in 2019. Now, did so you... With... <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was going to say with Shah Rukh, uh, so he was supposed to do uh, a Rakesh Sharma biopic, which is basically it's uh, the first man who sort of went on i believe it's a mission to mars I believe he okay. to go on a mission to mars so it's very much like our first man sort of thing uh by a picture story but he was supposed to do that and he dropped that because the word is that after zero tank the way it did he wanted to do something very safe so he's run back to farhan Akhtar and they want to make don free which is again a more commercially safe bet because i guess he wants to taste success again uh salman did the same thing he ran back to his comfort zone of doing parath with uh, ali abbas Safar which is, again, supposed to be about a man who's uh, who, who sort of from birth to death and how his life events sync up with the big historic events of the country, very far as Gump S. And Amir Khan, I think everyone was talking about how he was supposed to do his big Mahabharat uh, yeah, epic that's right. episode. So, but I believe he might do a film before that. Uh, it's unclear at the moment. So I guess they're all just trying to reevaluate a bit and I guess uh, introspect and be like, uh, what do I do now? Yeah, I remember sort of it was a Christmas message or New Year's message that Amir Khan tweeted out. Just basically, I'm reassessing. I'm thinking about uh-huh. my mistakes. I'm thinking how I can do better. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> but but I am. Uh, yeah, that Barat that Barat trailer was absolutely <laughs> insane. <laughs> I had forgotten when I was watching it that it had something to do with the circus. So yeah. when we got to that point, he's on the Navy ship, and then all of a sudden he's in the lighted tunnel, which of course makes you think it looked like the bond, like it just kind of had the, the neon lights or whatever. And then he's in this Elvis kind of costume on the motorcycle. <laughs> I think the best way I summarize that entire trailer is Salman does like an evil Knievel type jump dressed as Elvis, which just sounds like it, that's a thing. <laughs> Well, when I had, I guess a long time ago when I heard he was going to be in a circus day, I'm like, what? What? He's going to be in a trapeze? But this actually makes sense because yeah. him being a daredevil in a circus totally fits with Salman Khan. But it just, I got a lot of flack because I did a reaction and just my honest reaction was to burst out laughing when his motorcycle goes through the ring of fire. I'm like, this is so crazy. Especially the, yeah, you're right. It's Evil Knievel, which I don't think... People in India know yeah. that reference, but he was a real person, a dare, motorcycle daredevil in the 70s and 80s, you know? I mean, and that was the way he dressed, too, you know, just that kind of crazy Elvis, Elvis thing. So I, so guess... I actually like the Bharat trailer. I think it's, um, uh, so I think I, like, I don't really connect much with a lot of what Saman does, because again, it's that brand of cinema, but I think there is this aspect of him. We all, undeniably like we love we love the yeah. swag we love the entry we love the you know the mainstreamness of it all and um and i feel like a salman trailer perfectly captures everything we like about him when you yeah. watch the film you have to be there for two hours and it, it's a slog if depending on the film with a trailer it's all just impact and swag and slow motion and it's just the idea and it's just taking the best of those elements and putting them in a two-minute trailer yeah. Um, well, so, I just, yeah. I think a, him being a daredevil writer is perfect. It's actually perfect. <laughs> I, I just didn't know what it was at first. I just sort of, you know, he had this, re- like, what? But Katrina Kaif, of course, uh, notably stepped in when Priyanka Chopra left the film because yeah. of her wedding. 
So is Katrina playing his wife, or do we know any more about who else so is in the we film? we don't actually know. I know she, she's probably going to be the, the love interest. And I, 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 the whole point, I think, is to tell his story from, from when he's a young boy to when he grows up and everything that happens along the way. So I'm guessing there'll be a lot of makeup stuff, a lot of looking at him in different stages of his life um, and things like that. I think what she does in it is unclear, because obviously the first teaser of Salman is just Salman from different angles. Like, it's just... How many ways can you show the same person? Forget the wider cast and crew. Um, <laughs> right, exactly. So, well, so yeah, I, I mean, was actually zero I had a lot of issues with, but I was actually stunned by Katrina's performance in that. She really say. surprised. And so I hope she is starting to get more interesting work from it, aside from Barat. And also her action scene and Tigers in the High was absolutely amazing. There's something about a dancer. They can just bring um, that awareness of their body and that into those action scenes that just makes them amazing. So she should have her own action movie. So I honestly, I think um, she was, I've never said this about her in anything, but she was my favorite part about Tigers in the High. For me, Tigers in the High is yeah. an okay film that became so much more fun only because of her. Um, apart from, not just like, apart from the action itself, her character was it was very much like a bunch of boys in a room talking about how to do a plan and she can't be bothered to engage with them she'll, so she'll go off to the mission and come back where she you know like she's not she's yeah. not trying to throw her weight around she's just gonna she just goes and does it she's she's the one who always saves the day yeah the man is just there trying to look good and it's just so well done where you know you can just tell where she's like okay you know let them talk i'm just gonna go do the thing so right. i really enjoyed that yeah, and she was very good in Zero, too. I just, uh, it was a level of acting that we haven't seen from her before, and I it was a pleasant surprise. I liked that whole part of her in the film. And then it got crazy. <laughs> but in the second half, I got, kind of went off the rails. But, uh, yeah, so, well, I really appreciate you being on this podcast because this was a fascinating discussion talking about all these films. 2018 was a really interesting year in Hindi cinema. We had content-driven films, these uh, films with great scripts that really were big successes. And I'm looking forward to see, because a lot of the ones that we're talking about here seem are really content-driven, script-driven, not so yeah. much because they have huge stars attached. And that's what's exciting about the upcoming uh, year in 2019 in Hindi cinema. So thanks for, so much for being with me. And I hope you will come back again because this is an, awesome, so this is an awesome conversation. And I would love to do it, do it again. And we could get into it. Was a lot of fun. <laughs> awesome. All right. Where can people reach you, Suchin? And where can they find you online? Uh, so I'm on Twitter, uh, at Suchin505. <laughs>